welcome back everyone so on today's video we're going to be going over uh how to model uh mass spring systems where we're going to have free oscillations so to do this it's pretty straightforward we have our system here you can see it consists of a spring and a mass uh and basically the way we start is that if whenever we have a spring uh each spring has a spring stiffness k uh, where the units, you know, can vary, but usually they're between um, uh, force over uh, length. For example, the units here could be newtons over meter. Um, but then when you add a mass to it, where the units will be in kilograms, if we do the SI, um, that string, well, that spring will deflect a little bit, and this S is that deflection. Uh, but here the system is not moving. You can see that the spring uh, stretched a little bit, but it's not oscillating yet. It's just hanging. It's not nothing's happening. So the the system is in static equilibrium. But then if you bring this mass down, like if you pull it, you apply some motion y. Um, this spring will stretch more, and when you let it go, right, the, that 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 uh, mass will go up again and then down and up. And basically, we'll continue to oscillate forever if there's no uh, friction applying, you know, in this system. Um, so to model this, we have the equation as follows, which is a second order differential equation, a homogeneous second equation, second order. And you can see we have um, if y it's our displacement, then uh, y prime will be our velocity and y double prime will be our acceleration. So you can see basically this is modeled from the free body diagram. This is modeled from um, the force equals ma. And we'll show you an example later how to, how to get that one. But basically the equation is m y double prime uh, plus k, which is spring stiffness times the displacement. Um, and that equals to zero. And whenever you solve this ODE, um, you can see if we divide by mass, we're going to get something like this. y double prime plus k over m y where we know um, that if k over m, or basically uh, that is the same thing, or the square root of k over m, it's this omega naught, which we know as the natural frequency of the system, meaning that this is a frequency at which the system basically be oscillating back and forth um, throughout the whole motion. So if we know that omega, it's uh, the square root, and if we have k over m, then that will be simply omega naught square. So you can see this is our differential equation. Uh, we've seen in different videos how to solve that one. We apply the characteristic equation, lambda square plus omega naught square. We solve, and based on this, we get that this will give us a pure imaginary answer of plus minus omega naught times i, which is a case three. And because it's a case three with no real parts, our answer it's in this form. Y as a function of time is equals to A times cosine of omega t plus B sine omega t. And basically, uh, after initial conditions, we can identify whatever A and B are. And we can see that our uh, motion for this spring will be a sinusoidal motion because basically our string will be oscillating back and forth. So this is basically how it would look like over time, up and down, up and down, and so on. So this is a, that's why it's a sinusoidal uh, question. Okay, so let's solve, let's solve the problem that we have here as an example, and hopefully you guys can get the information a little bit better. So here's an example. We have an, an iron ball weights 98 newtons, and it stretches a spring 1.09 meters. So the first question they're asking us is, how many cycles per minute will the mass spring system execute? So basically, all they're asking us here is what is that uh, the natural frequency of the system. So we have here our model. You can see it's here. Um, we have a spring once here, and we have our mass. And they're telling us basically um, information about it. So we need to find then what is the natural frequency. So let's do our free body diagram. That's what we need to do first. So let's do our that. So free body diagram. And it will look something like this. So we have the ball. 
and there are two forces at play. So you have the force of the spring, um, which in this case it's a uh, ky, and you have the weight, which we know it's equals to maximum gravity. And keep in mind this is w, this is weight, this is not omega, so this is just the weight. So I'm just gonna write it then as maximum gravity. So we have two opposite forces. The system, you know, it's um moving static equilibrium. So whenever you solve for this, you get then that ky it's equals to mg. And you can solve here. Uh we know that the spring uh stretches 1.9 meters, so that's y. And we know the weight to be 98 newtons. So from here we can get then that we have k times 1.09 meters equals to 98 newtons. So if we solve for k from here, we're gonna get this to be 98 newtons over 1.09 meters. And this, if we basically solve, we're gonna get approximately 90 newtons per meter and this is how much that k is so what else do we need for our natural frequency we need mass so we got k we got m so basically mass it's pretty easy to to get so we know here that uh weight is equal to mass times gravity so we get then that mass it's equal to 98 newtons over 9.81 meters per second square so then the mass will be equal to approximately 10 kilograms and you can see we're basically rounding up so now that we have that we need to see so we know that omega naught it's equal to um the square root of k over m so then let's plug in the number. So square root of 90 newtons per meter over 10 kilograms. And when we do this, uh, 90 over 10, that's nine. The square root of nine, that's basically three. And our units, they should cancel out. Newtons, meters, kilograms, all of everything. And we're gonna end up with radians per second. So we know a natural frequency, it's three radians per second uh, but they're asking us here in cycles per minute so then we need to do some conversions here um so we know uh also that um the natural frequency can also be written as 2 pi times f which is just the frequency in hertz so then f will be equals to uh or not the uh, radians per second over two pi. So this will be three radians per second over two pi radians. And what we're gonna be getting from here will be zero point forty eight hertz. Okay, so hertz it's cycles per second. But we need this in cycles per minute. So we're almost there. So then we plug in here uh, 0 0.48 uh, cycles per second. That's what the hertz is. Times uh, 60 seconds under one minute. And this is going to be equal to 29 cycles per minute. And this is the answer for the first part of the question. So we have 29 cycles per minute. So basically, this system, uh, once you release it, will be oscillated back and forth. And it will do it at a frequency of 29 cycles per minute. So 29 cycles, 29 uh, oscillations every minute, approximately. 
Now, the second part of the question is, what will, be, what will be its motion if we pull down the weight an additional 16 centimeters and we let us start with zero initial velocity? So then let's, let's check that. So they're asking us for the motion. This is the motion if uh, we have, let's say, when we start, this will be stretch 16 centimeters. Um, and the initial velocity, you know, y prime, when it's zero, it's equal to zero meters per second. So basically, we have this. We know the equation of motion for this, right? We got it from the last uh the the last um part where we uh showing the the systems and we know that the equation of motion is y double prime plus omega naught square y equals to zero and basically once again this equation can come from uh equating uh these two mass times gravity in this case gravity um you can do it as a uh, oh the same uh, free body diagram. We can do uh, equating the the mass uh, times the acceleration and the k times the displacement. In this case, one of them basically will uh, become negative. One of these two will become negative, depending where we select our y to go. And since here we're selecting that y is going down, we can see that's positive. So we could see that this one could be negative. And basically, all of our numbers will uh, continue to be correct, or the magnitudes. And here, when you e um, basically equate these two the, or send them to the other side, you will get your positive here. All right, so let's continue. All right, so from here, we have y double prime. And this is plus, where we know what omega naught is. It's 3, so it's square. That's 9y equals to 0. We know how to solve this kind of equation, second order homogeneous over the E. So we use the characteristic equation. We're going to get lambda squared plus 9 equals to 0. So if we want to solve, we'll get lambda squared is equal to negative 9. The square rooting, we're going to get that lambda is equal to uh, plus or minus square root of negative 9. So then we get the lambda, it's equals to plus or minus 3i. And since this is our uh, roots, then this is a case 3, because we got imaginary numbers. And since this is pure imaginary, all right, this is pure imaginary numbers, our answer will be in the form of y as a function of time is equals to a cosine of 3t plus b sine of 3t. And this will be the general solution for this. So what we need to do now is we need to apply the initial conditions. And by applying the initial conditions, um, we can then see what the actual uh, equation will be. Okay, so let's see. So let's find the, the, the derivative of this. So y prime of t. So this equation basically will be telling us the velocity it will be negative 3a sine of 3t plus 3b cosine of 3t. So applying the initial conditions for uh, the first equation, so we have that a y of zero will be equal to 16 centimeters, but we're working in meters, so that will be 0.16. So then we have 0.16, it's equal to a cosine of zero plus b sine of zero. And in this case, um, then we know that sine of zero just goes to zero, cosine of zero to one. So we're left with uh, A equals to 0 0.16 meters. And let's do the same thing, but for the other condition. 
So we have here that y prime of zero equals zero. So we have zero equals to negative three a sine of zero plus three b cosine of zero. We know that sine of zero will go to zero, cosine of zero will go to one, and we are left here then that b is equal to zero. So our equation of motion basically will just be left with that cosine term. So then finally, we can get our particular solution, and this will be 0 0.16 cosine of 3t. And this, my friends, is our particular solution for this specific problem. So if we can graph this, it will basically tell us how it will look like. Um, and here I'm showing you in this graph, in this image right here, uh, you can see that we, since it's a cosine, we start at the top when time is zero, because that's how it will stretch. That's basically the motion. Uh, we're on the top. And as time progresses, we're going to go down and then back up again, because it's a cosine, and we're going to go like this indefinitely. And this is the radians, but if we were to stretch this into cycles per second, then we will see the 29 cycles in a minute. So that is it for this problem. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, good luck.